Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through analysis model principles. So in our last lecture, we have just started the modeling, right? So we, I just gave you an introduction about analysis model and design model. Okay, so now let us go through analysis modeling principles. Guys, don't worry about the concepts, guys, because we will we are having a whole like half chapter all about analysis analysis modeling and design modeling also. So we'll be discussing about them clearly. So don't worry about the concepts. So like one like uh, for now you just remember the principles like you understand the principles that will be enough okay so the first principle is nothing but so analysis is nothing but we are doing analysis on models you are not designing models here please remember that so the information domain of the problem must be clearly represented so you will be designing right at the end so in that the data should be represented clearly the domain of problem should be represented clearly so here we will be using some diagram which is called as a dfa guys that is nothing but data flow diagram okay so here we use data flow diagrams to show the information domain so basically you can say data flow diagrams are nothing but like just like flow charts guys in simple words you can say okay so input flow into the system and output from the system and everything will be represented so that's what i was saying it's just like a flow chart you can say simply okay Principle two, the function of the software must be defined clearly. So assume I told you this is analysis phase, right? So in analysis phase, you should analyze each and every function. So assume this is a function to draw a square, assume you wrote square. So what are the parameters, what it will return, whether it will return or print everything. It should be 100% clear in this situation guys, because after this, you are directly going to design phase means you will be designing a model or you will be designing some UML diagram for it, right? For each and every function, we'll be defining and a small block. For each module, we'll be having one UML diagram. And for each small module, it will be a small part of a whole UML diagram. Okay. So functions are the processes. Those transfer the input from input flow to the output flow. So basically, they will be taking some input and they'll be generating some output or they'll be storing some output. Okay. As the next step is of coding, here the input and output functions should be mentioned properly and clearly. Okay. So the next third step is nothing but behavior of the system must be clear. Okay. So basically a single function giving on one input, it might act in a way and giving on another type of input can act in a different way. So even these kind of things will also be there. So basically the behavior of the system should also be mentioned clearly. So here state transition diagrams are used. So basically we'll be discussing about these also guys. Don't worry. Okay. So here state transition diagrams are used to represent the behavior of the system clearly transition from one state to another state is mentioned here so basically they will be in this way guys there'll be uh, items here even i explained you it will be a bit tough to understand sorry you'll be having some events here so the transition diagrams are nothing but you, you from here you'll be going to here based on the thing you'll be going to the next step or you'll be coming back so like this the transition the how you are going from one stage to another stage it will be here guys so guys will be discussing about them also don't worry you can call it a sequence diagrams also in some books it is written sequence diagram also okay similarly principle four is nothing but the clear hierarchical amount of information functions behavior must be shown so basically after this step you'll be designing the final model and you'll be going for coding right so in analysis only you should analyze it so what should be the class name what are the functions inside the class what are the variables inside the class and what it will give you the output, what it will take as an input. So everything you should analyze here only the proper hierarchy. So if it is a main class and if this is hierarchically connected to another child class, so all these properties will be repeated here. So what is the relation between them? What should be their representations? Like everything you should identify guys. So the proper hierarchy of analysis model leads to an easy design. So if this all thing is clear, you can design it clearly and you can code it also in a simple way. So that is the reason why analysis is also important. So hence this represents representation show should be perfectly layer by layer. So basically layer by layer clearly it should be given. Okay. Okay. So further moving on the last principle is nothing but analysis should be clear enough to convert into design model. Yes. So the final thing that you will be you will be doing in design model sorry analysis design analysis model is nothing but you'll be converting this analysis into design model. Right. So it should be convertible and it should be easy to understand. So the analysis model is converted into design model in the next modeling step. Hence, if analysis requirement is not clear, simply it will, sim it is clear, then it will be simple to design it. Yes, that is true. I agree for it. Yes. 
Okay, so I hope everyone got some basic idea about analysis uh, principles, guys. Analysis model modeling principles. So in the next lecture, we will be continuing with the design modeling principles. Okay, so let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.